Okay, we continue our discussion on matrices of a graph, and in this video, we are going to talk about the adjacency matrix of a graph and some of the very simple properties of adjacency matrix of a graph. So let me start by giving the definition of the adjacency matrix of a graph. So let G be an undirected graph with the vertex set v1, v2 up to vn. So we are dealing with a graph with n vertices and the edge set containing e1, e2 up to em, okay, m edges and without parallel edges. So the adjacency matrix, okay, it is going to be an n by n symmetric binary matrix. So it is going to be an n by n matrix where n is the number of uh, vertices in the graph okay, whose entries are defined as follows x i j equal to 1 if v1 uh, if v i v j is an element of e. Okay, that means that okay, if okay, these two vertices v i and v j uh, they are connected by an edge okay, then we set x i j equal to 1 okay, if they are not connected by an edge okay, then we set x i j to be equal to Zero. So, this is how we define an adjacency matrix. So, let us look at an example. So, for example, consider this graph G and this graph it has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 vertices and they are labeled uh, as V1, V2 up to V6. Okay, and here okay, this X it is going to be our adjacency matrix for this graph G and okay, it is going to be a, uh, in this case. 6 by 6 matrix and each rows and columns are indexed by the vertices of this graph. So, first row is indexed by the uh, first vertex, second by the second, second row by the second vertex and so forth and similarly the columns are also indexed by the uh, vertices okay, in the same order, first row, first column etcetera etcetera. So, first column is indexed by the first vertex, second column by the second uh, vertex and so forth. Okay, and here uh, we can see that if you consider say V1, so V1 is this vertex. So we can see that V1 is connected to V2 and V6, and it is uh, not connected to others directly. Okay, so that says uh, x16. Okay, x16 will be equal to one, and x12. Okay, will be equal to one, and it is also connected to Five, so that says x15 will also be equal to 1. So that is that is how we define the first row. Okay, similarly we can see that it is going to be a symmetric one. So if you look at the first column again the same kind of thing happens. So we can see that okay if you look at this uh, column okay there is a one here and that says okay, there is an edge between v1 and v2. Okay, so V1 and V2, there is an edge. Okay, since we are dealing with undirected graphs, okay. And similarly, if you look at this entry, that corresponds to uh, V1, V5. Okay, V1, V5. So we can see that there is an edge. Okay, similarly, we can also see that V1, V6. Okay, this co uh, this entry is also equal to one. So that says there will be an edge between V1, V6. Okay, that you can see from this particular graph. Okay. So that's why this uh, matrix it is going to be a symmetric one. Okay, and similarly, uh, you can see that if you look at the second vertex, okay, the second vertex is connected to V1. So that says V2 uh, x21 will be equal to one, and it is connected to four. Okay, so that says two four x24 will be equal to one, and it is again connected to V5. So that says x25 will be equal to one. Okay, and let's look at one more thing. The one more row here okay just so let's look at and similarly if you look at the second column again you can see the same kind of thing okay v2 is connected to v1 okay, v2 is connected to v1 so we, we have a one here and similarly v2 is connected to v4 since we have a one here okay v2 is connected to v4 okay we can see from this graph and similarly uh, we have a one here so that says v2 is connected to v5 okay v2 is connected to v5 okay so you can verify that from this particular diagram okay of this graph okay so uh, one more example let's look at say v6 so we are dealing with this vertex so we can see that it is connected to only v1 and v4 okay so so it is connected to v1 so we set a one here and since uh, we also have 
and at between v6 and v4 so that's x64 that the 64 will be equal to 1 you can similarly uh, you can also look at that column okay, you will see the same kind of thing okay and again if you look at this particular vertex that's a okay it's a pendant vertex anyway so it is connected to v4 okay so v3 is connected to v4 so 3 x3 4 will be equal to 1 and uh, this entry v3 v4 okay that will also be equal to 1 okay and this is how uh, we define the adjacency matrix of a graph okay so it's a straightforward kind of definition okay so if we are given an undirected graph with n vertices okay without parallel edges then that's the adjacency matrix it is going to be uh, an n by n symmetric binary matrix whose entries are defined in this way so if there is an edge between two vertices we say v i v j we set x i j equal to 1 otherwise we set x i j equal to 0 so let's look at some basic properties some basic properties of this matrix so immediately we can see that okay, here are some simple observation the entries along the principal diagonal of, of x okay, principal diag diagonal of x are all zeros if and only if the graph has no self loop for example okay if you look at this particular graph we can see that okay, there are no self loop so if you look at the principal diagonals here okay every entry is zero and that says okay, in this case it only says without parallel edges we could have uh, loops also if that's the case then uh, since we have an edge from b4 to v4 okay, in that case we will set okay this b2 equal bit equal to 1 okay so that says the entries along the principal diagonal of x are zero c if and only if it has no self loop however a self loop at the ith vertex corresponds to x i i equal to 1 okay so we saw from that example right? so if the graph has no self loops okay we can see that uh, this is one important property of the adjacency matrix the degree of a vertex okay will okay it is equal to the number of ones in the corresponding row or column of x for example if you look at the first row here the first row corresponds to vertex v1 and if you count the number of it is uh, number of ones in the first row we have one two three okay and that says the degree of v1 equal to three okay that we can see from here the degree of v1 equal to three and similarly if you look at the first column the first column corresponds to vertex number 1 and if you count the number of 1s again we can see that the number of 1s is 1, 2, 3 ok and that says the degree of v1 is 1, 2, 3 ok and uh, let's look at one more example let's consider say this row v5 and here v5 it, it has 1, 2, 3 ok 3 1s and that says degree of v5 ok will be equal to 3 ok so that you can see from here okay the degree of v5 is equal to 3 and similarly you can also see the same thing if you look at the fifth column number of ones is uh, okay 1 2 3 okay and Okay, and if you look at say uh, v4 okay so v4 is connected to v2 okay it is connected to v3 it is connected to v5 and also it is connected to uh, v6 so i made a typo here okay and that's why we have a 6 here okay so that says if you count the number of ones here okay if you count the number of ones here number of ones is 1 2 3 4 okay and that says the degree of uh, v4 is 4 okay so you can see from here degree is 4 and similarly if you look at uh, that column the number of ones is 1 2 3 4 okay so that says the degree of v4 equal to 4 okay so that says uh, number of ones in a particular column corresponds to the degree of the vertex okay so uh, it holds if the graph has no self loops the degree of a vertex equal to the number of ones in the corresponding row or column. So similarly, we can also see that, okay, the okay, same thing with other matrices that we discussed so far. So if you permute a row, okay, that corresponds to simply reordering 
the vertices okay so permutation of a row and the corresponding column imply reordering of the vertices for example okay if you uh, extend uh, this v1 and v5 these two rows so v5 will come here and v1 will go there okay again we can see that it's just a reordering of the uh, rows and columns and that corresponds to the same <coughs> graph okay so permutation of rows and the corresponding column imply reordering the vertices <coughs> so another important thing uh, we can see here is that okay if you look at any square matrix any square symmetric and the binary matrix q of order n okay suppose that you are given a matrix q a symmetric binary matrix of order n then we can very easily <coughs> uh, find a graph with n vertices and without parallel edges whose adjacent symmetrics is q okay for example suppose that you are given this matrix okay and that matrix is a symmetric one and it is a binary one okay so what we can do is we can take that matrix and <coughs> okay, we can very easily draw <coughs> okay we can very easily draw a graph okay or build a graph out of that okay and that's what uh, this property says so if you are given any square symmetric binary matrix q of order n then there exists a graph g with n vertices and without parallel edges whose adjacent matrix is equal to q okay so something like this we are given uh, this matrix okay it's a binary matrix it's symmetric then we can very easily draw a graph okay with uh, the number of with the number of vertices equal to the number of uh, rows or columns uh, of that matrix okay so that's one another important property to note and one more important property and that says so if you are given a disconnected graph if j is disconnected having components say uh, g1 and g2 okay in that case we can a uh, partition the uh, the adjacent symmetrics uh, x can be partitioned into two block matrices something like this okay where this block corresponds to the adjacent symmetrics for uh, this graph okay x of g1 and this block it corresponds to the adjacent symmetrics of the second component okay so if you have more than two components then uh, in this in that case uh, we will place the adjacent matrix for the first component here second component here third component here fourth component here and so forth okay so let's look at an example for example if you consider this graph g <coughs> okay we can very easily see that okay, this it is going to be the adjacent symmetrics for this graph g okay it has two components g1 and g2 okay and if you order Uh, the rows and columns in such a way that okay uh, uh, this first three in this case first three is rows corresponds to uh, the vertices of the uh, component one and the next four corresponds to the vertices of the component two okay, then we can see that we can partition this matrix into two block matrices something like this and this okay and we can see that okay if, if you look at this uh, sub matrix <coughs> okay that corresponds to uh, the adjacent symmetrix of g1 and okay this block it corresponds to the adjacent symmetrix of g2 okay and we can extend this idea to uh, a graph having more than two components also okay in that case we will have something like this we place the block matrix here and all the entries here will be zero and all the entries will be here zero we place the second uh, adjacent symmetrix of the second component here and we and remaining thing will be zero and remaining will be zero and so forth okay so in this video we defined the adjacent matrix of a graph okay and we went through some basic property basic properties of the adjacent symmetrics of a graph <coughs>